The following is a dramatization drawn from the observations of Tom Wicker, a witness to the Attica State Correctional Facility Rebellion. The events occurring over 23 days, August 22nd to September 13th, 1971, are compressed for time. Certain composite characters have been given fictitious names. What's going on? I think it's the George Jackson thing. That black con they blew away at San Quentin. Some kind of memorial. They're all doing it. Whites, too. I've never seen anything like it. It was creepy. Uh, these men are revolutionaries. They got the whole place organized. Troublemakers ought to be transferred, not pampered. Transferred where, Vince? We got problems all over the state. I think it's no different. Well, then don't make my job harder. I don't see that I am. These inmates know you're here. Their man is coming in. The Commissioner of Correction for the State of New York is going to listen to him. That'll give the militants standing and credibility. Most of the requests are reasonable. Now, the governor's given me the green light to make the changes anyway, so why not let the inmates know they're not completely without rights? They're not requests, they're demands. You give an inch, they're gonna take a mile. I've got guards asking for wall duty because they're afraid to mix with the men. Yes? Superintendent Mancusi, he's here. Send him in.
Commissioner, this is Frank Green. Frank, the commissioner's come all the way from Albany and his wife's in a hospital, so make it quick. I've been considering your requests, Frank. You ain't nothing so complicated. You're talking about simple things. We're talking about one lousy shower a week. We're talking about food trays so dirty a man can eat off of them, and the food on them costs 65 cents a day, which ain't enough to feed a dog. We're talking about the hacks reading and censoring our mail. We're talking about a man getting 35 cents for a day's work in the metal shop. That's enough, Frank. I'm making it as quick as I can. We're talking about 60% black prisoners and 0% black guards. We're talking about being dragged off to detention for our religious and political beliefs and then getting our butts kicked when we get there. We're talking about harassment and brutalization and being treated like animals. It's all here, Commissioner, in black and white and Puerto Rican. I said that's enough. Just a minute. Now, we've tried to get these changes done in a democratic fashion, but things ain't got better. They ain't got worse. I mean, the hacks are bearing down on us, and my brothers are getting hot. Is that a threat? It's a description. Well, to cool things down, if I go down to the yard and talk to the men. I can't permit that. Well, it depends on what you're going to say and when you're going to say it. Now, in the yard, I'll say I've considered your requests, found most of them valid, and that I intend to implement all those changes that are in my power. Hey, we'll be waiting and we'll be listening. You're making it impossible for me to run this prison. If the prisoners don't riot, the guards will mutiny. Vince, I've spent my life trying to make prisons into places civilized people don't have to be ashamed of. Now, the governor appointed me to make changes, and I intend to make them. You insist on going into the yard against regulations. I'll need time to get extra security. Yes. Tell him. Commissioner, the hospital called. Your wife's getting worse. You won't have time to go into the yard. This is Commissioner Russell Oswald. I wanted to talk to you personally about the request for change submitted by the Attica Liberation Faction. What about guards' liberation? I have discussed this matter with Governor Rockefeller and Superintendent Mancusi. You said that sucker was coming down. I have prepared to put into effect such changes as are reasonable and within my power to correct. For example, it is not in my what power did he to say? simply guarantee you minimum Bull. wage scales for prisoners. That matter must be referred to the proper assembly. But I can assure you that you have my support, and I will lobby strongly for some improvement in this area. You asked for law, library. I am in favor of that. Hey, Frank, thought you went up and talked to the man. What's it been, huh? A week? Hey, I don't believe you went up there. I don't even believe you saw him. And I don't care what you don't believe. I just told you I went and talked to the man. Frank, you're lying. I said you're lying. Come here, please, please. Let me talk. I just want to talk to you. All right, Louis. That's it. You've been warned about the fighting. You're keep locked till supper. Come on, hold your arms. Good hell. Simmer down, Eddie. It's no big deal. Come on, old man. Eddie needs help. We gotta go get him. Forget it, let it drop. We can't forget it. That nigger pushed you. No, he didn't. I didn't feel a thing. Okay, it's over. Go on. Enough standing around. It's over. He beat him. All he did was play a game of lose. Goon Squad will come and get him tonight. You beat him by being cool, TJ. With writs, judgments, the law. That right, jailhouse lawyer? And how come your black ass still here? Sir, I think we're gonna need more men. It's bad. They're ready to blow. I can feel it. There are no more men because there's no more money. 
Commissioner Oswald wants to spend it on clean trays and a more nourishing diet, instead of on the people who are on the line running this zoo. That's what I've been trying to explain to your union. Sorry, John. Yes, sir. trying to teach you. Do your own time. <laughs> With you. You dead? That's it. You're dead and you don't even know it. You've been in here so long, man. You dead and you don't even know it. just blew up. Get the civilians out quick. I'll call Albany.
see you've been taking some flack on the letters page for your pieces on George Jackson. Well, I've been called worse. Black militant con gets gunned down in an escape attempt. And you think they set him up? No, I didn't say that. I said there was some holes in the official story and it was going to be hard for black people to believe. What is it with you reconstructed Southerners? Every time there's a story about blacks, you feel you got to prove that you're more radical than Bobby Seale. When I was writing that story, a bunch of college students asked me to sign an open letter condemning Nixon for bombing Cambodia. And when I refused, they called me a fascist. Now, now you're calling me the house radical. And what do you call yourself? <laughs> Just a wretch of a reporter trying to hold on to his credibility. Excuse me, Mr. Wicker. Telephone. Thank you. Excuse me. Hello? Tom, the most exciting thing, they want you to go to Attica. Where? The prison near Buffalo, where the riot started two days ago. From Washington? Haven't they got somebody in the New York office? Tom, it's the prisoners. They asked for you specifically. OK, uh, get me on a plane and uh, call my wife and tell I won't be home for supper. Well, sir, this isn't like any prison riot I ever heard about. They've had us bring a new gentleman from Buffalo since this morning. Reporters? Uh, no, sir, observers. Men the cons asked for. Do you know what we're supposed to observe? No, sir. The cons still have the yard. We took the rest of it back. If it was up to me, we'd have taken it all back. But they got hostages in there. Mr. Wicker, that's a maximum security prison. Those are mean dudes in there. Murderers, rapists, armed robbers. What do you think they're going to do to those hostages? There must be a way to get them out. Yes, sir. Reason with them. I guess that's what you're supposed to do. Reason with 1,200 rioting cons. Lots of luck, sir. since Wednesday. But the governor's office doesn't consider amnesty a viable issue. I'd still like to hear what the DA has to say. I've already talked to him, and he said it's out of the question. Now, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but that's it. There isn't going to be any amnesty. And there shouldn't be. How is the superintendent supposed to run this place when convicted felons know they can riot, commit God knows how many criminal acts, including the possible murder of a guard, and get off scot-free? Senator Connors, they've got 40 hostages. If they can't get amnesty, there isn't going to be a negotiated settlement, and people are going to get killed. Please, let's not jump to conclusions. You're all going into the yard now. We want to know the mood of the inmates, how firm their demands are, and whether the hostages are safe. Commissioner, uh, Tom Wicker, the New York Times. We appreciate you coming, Mr. Wicker. You know Art Silver, American Lawyers Guild? Sure. All right. Mr. Silver can fill you in. Is, uh, is amnesty the main issue? No, but it's the killer. A guard named Tanner got hit in the head when the riot first started. If he dies, every man out there is facing a possible murder rap. What else do they want? Lots of things, most of them pretty reasonable. Better food, better medical care, less cell time, no censorship of mail, grievance committees, and uh, sensitivity training for guards. Have you been down there? this morning with Oswald. What's it like? Sort of a cross between Mardi Gras, the French Revolution, and Watts in the summer of 65. It's a mess. Thanks, Barbara. Kunstler's coming. But I still can't find that Muslim minister. Mm. Hey, Tom Wickett. Raymond Franklin. Herman, you know what we're supposed to be doing here. No. But then most of the time, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing in Washington. Oh, is that for the record, Congress? Mm -mm. <laughs> You don't have to think of it. That's probably what you're doing here, making sure everything's on the record, huh? Will they ask for me? Well, of course. 
You, Leon, Ray here, Bill Kunstler, the rest of you badass dudes. Well, then Rocky figured the committee be a bit too radical, so his office calls me. Badillo, the establishment Puerto Ricanio from the Bronx. Look, I just got here. Never mind him. We got everything here from uh, prisoners' rights lawyers like uh, Silver to uh, Gold Water Republicans like Connors over here. Well, how in the world are we ever supposed to agree on anything? Who says we have to agree? Remember, we're just observers. Hey, don't you believe it, buddy. No, Oswald's not going back into that yard again. No, he thinks the cons tried to take him this morning. Well, that makes us it, the negotiators. Well, who are we supposed to represent, Oswald or the inmates? I guess you'll just have to pick a side. Gentlemen, time to go. I wish you more luck than I had. Well, if they don't decide to add a congressman and a reporter to the list of hostages, at least that would solve the problem by taking sides, wouldn't it? Watches, wallets, weapons. Weapons. And where they'll get guns is at the road end from the outside. Making sure we all come out, huh? That's right. Wouldn't want to lose any of you VIPs. TV news. Came in this morning with Oswald, mistaken. They asked for the media. They want everything on the record. On a hold! Lighter! Lighter! Move up! Move up! Move up! Tell you one thing, Tom. Better go out there with my accent and yours. I'm coming from and I want you to 
dig what I'm saying. What's happening to us here ain't nothing but what happens to oppressed people all over the world. Now, we've been cheated, we've been lied to, we've been kept down, we've been treated like dirt. And when we rise up and try to take what is rightfully ours, they lock us away in places like this. But we, here, Attica, black, brown, and white brothers, we have decided that we ain't gonna take it no more. We are gonna show the world the way because we know the way. Close up of you. Give him a big yell, huh? We stand for the oppressed people of the world. We're not gonna give up. We know the way. You get more down. Now I want you to meet these brothers. I want you to let them know how we feel about them coming in here to help us. My, my name's Darrell Alm, Mr. Wicker. You're from the South? Florence, South Carolina. My God, we used to drive through there on the way to Myrtle Beach. I'm from Hamlet. I know. Well, <laughs> both a long way from home, aren't we? Yeah. Well, I just want you to know the way we treated black folks down home. Well, here, us and the black guys sticking together, helping each other out. And, and if we don't get what we want, we're going to die together. I just want you to know that. Man, what'd you do to get yourself in here? Cut up a cop. As soon as this is over, we're gonna take a look at the hostages and split. Hey, wait a minute, whoa. What's that all about? You're supposed to stay here and negotiate. Oswald wants to be sure that the hostages are all right. Who are you with? Us or them? Okay, okay. They're okay. You'll see them. But we got to know what's going on out there. Oswald's willing to go along with uh, most of your demands. Well, that's not all of them. We got a committee working on some more. Listen, they got an army out there. Well, we got our own army in here, cracker. TJ, be cool. We got no crackers in here. No niggers either. We're all just men. That's the point. Well, if the army men tries to come in here, the hostage men are meat. Hostages are the only thing you got to negotiate. We got it under control. We got food distribution, security, medical, even had elections. Brothers are holding steady. For now. Yeah, where's Bill Custer? That's one hunky I can really get down with. Where's Bobby Seal? And militants like that aren't gonna help you. We decide who's gonna help us. And it don't sound like you or him has got the right spirit. Kunstler's coming. We're getting your people here as fast as we can. Yes. All, right. All right. Brothers, Brothers our, our friends from the outside, outside want to see the hostages. Follow him. All right, All right stand, stand aside. That's right. right. Give them room. Double side, right. right. They want to see the hostages. Right. What they're, what they're going to see is that the hostages are fine. They got mattresses to sleep on, food, cigarettes. Cigarette. Cigarette. Whatever it is that we got, they got. They never had it so good. And I'll tell you another thing. I'll lose them, brothers. Treat them hats a lot better than they treated us. And I got the truth. Fine on white and visual. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Treat him very well. Connors, Gordon yeah, Connors. The numbers are just one, two, one, one, four, one. Check it again. Treat well. We'll try to get you out as soon as we can.
DJ. He's young, he's got it in his head that all white folks are devils until proved otherwise. Who do you all want? I don't know any more now than when I went in there. Well, Brother Green wants liberty and justice for all. TJ wants the same thing, but only for black folks. Brother Lenny wants to get back at the hacks. We have what you call an uneasy coalition. Yeah, us too. What about you? You seem different to me. You seem like a man who's willing to compromise. No, no. I'm with them, 100%. Don't get the idea that I think you and me is alike. Because there's one big difference between us. I thought you said... No, no, I'm not talking about black and white. I'm in and you're out. I might get the feeling they like this better out there than in here. Yeah, all these damn guns. sufficient to represent the wild-eyed radical block, but if the men requested representatives from the black Muslims and the young lords, I think they should have them. I need clout with the governor. You need clout with the men, Commissioner. They're the ones with the hostages. You know, the movement's out there right now giving interviews to the press. The men find out you're trying to keep them away. All right, all right. Walter. It's good. Now, when can I get down to the yard? Soon, Mr. Consular. Soon. The hostages are OK. Got them tied up blindfolded, they made them put on prisoners' clothes. Yeah, it's hard to tell a con from a guard. Except that all the guards are white. Look, I started a program to recruit black guards, but it's not easy. Well, where are you doing recruiting from, Commissioner? Isn't a black family within 30 miles of here the only black faces those guys see are behind bars? Ray, what's it like down there? It's a mob yelling about class struggle and oppressed masses. Well, I wouldn't take that too seriously. Most of that's just play action for the TV news cameras. Some of the leaders are reasonable. Don't kid yourself. That mob could turn on the hostages at any moment. No, I don't think so. No, they're organized. They're protecting those hostages. Look, what do you think it'll take to get them out of there? I'll give anything in my power. Sure. And when they're safely locked in their cages, it's back to square one. That's not why they came out, Commissioner. This isn't about a bunch of cons banging their spoons for an extra ration of milk. It's about human beings fighting for their rights, for decent treatment. You don't want to find a way out of this. You want a revolution. If that's what it takes to get these hell holes torn down, you're damn right I do. There we are. Typical left-wing tactics. That's exactly the kind of talk we heard out in the yard. No, 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 Senator Connors. We have to talk like that to get through to sick-headed reactionaries like you. If we didn't, convicts in this country would still be dragging leg irons. <laughs> Gentlemen, please. Glad to see everybody's got such an open mind. What if the inmates decide to take them? What then? What are you gaining by this? Information. We're trying to get a complete list of demands. Out there, they're making speeches. In here, they're yelling at each other. I don't know what we've got. I know what we've got. I got cons running half my prison and a bunch of loudmouth radicals running the other half. I got one corrections officer in the hospital and 300 others asking me why I'm not doing anything about it. We're not there yet, Vince. I'll let you know when we are. I tell you, Bill, I wish I was as sure about things as you are. Uh, still the dispatcher reporter, huh, Tom? When are you going to stop analyzing and start doing something? Analyzing is my job. That's doing something. What's it going to take? Another Vietnam? Kent State? A message from the burning bush? I don't put much faith in revolutions, Bill. 
human nature being what it is, I'm not sure the new boys do any better than the old ones. Oh, you'll do nothing while the Nixons, the Agnews, the Mitchells, and the Oswalds. Now, Oswald's a decent man. He's looking for a way out. Hmm. He's a bureaucrat. When the pressure gets too great, he's going to give the order. Those goons are going to go in there and kick ass. Then what are you doing here? I'm not going to let him do it in the dark. Are you? I'm a black man. I'm a Muslim. And I demand the right to be with my brothers in their hour of struggle. He's not Joshua Lamumba. He's Clarence Howard. He just got out of C Block last year. Now, what's going on? The cons asked for a guy named Shabani Lamumba. This one says he's Joshua Lamumba. He's not even the same one the cons asked for. Oh, no, what? He's a Muslim, isn't he? If he doesn't go in, we don't go in. Now, wait a minute. What the hell is this? As far as I'm concerned, you can go in and stay in. unless Oswald and Rocky let him. Not exactly the voice of moderation, is it? Brothers, you have to remember one thing. You have to decide what you want. We can't decide for you. The man can't decide for you. You have the power. You tell us, and we will be your voice. Sit down and actually negotiate. And we're trying. We're trying. What do you think about all this? Oh, no. All the shocking and jiving of the oppressed classes and all. I mean, I guess I'm one of them, you know. But see, I got me a wife and kid, and a release date, 16th of next month. So what I want, me, I just want to get out of here. Why don't you get up there and say something? They're all up there being TV stars. I stand up and they tear me apart. What do you think's gonna happen? And this is a great big fish tank. The man up there on the walls with the gun, letting us swim around and blow bubbles at each other. But when he gets fed up, he's gonna pull the plug, and all the suckers be flopping around, suffocating to death.
two kinds of demands here. The conditions, that's one kind. But this Mancusi stuff, well, that's another thing. <laughs> Don't you think Mancusi's a condition? He's the main condition. The man's a racist. He keeps all the black, brown, and white brothers fighting against each other so they don't see who the real enemy is. All right, but what about this transportation to a non-imperialist country business? Some of the brothers wanted it. Myself, I'm not all that hot for Algeria. But some stays. of the brothers... Hey, it stays. Listen, I can understand why you need amnesty. Need it? We got to have it. We ain't got amnesty, we ain't got nothing. If that guard dies, Mr. Wickham... Yeah, I understand that, but we've got to sell it. Now, where's the logic? I mean, crimes have been committed oh, yet. Wow. Nobody denies it. Oh, I, I committed a crime. They caught me. They gave me a trial. And they put me in here to pay my debt to society. Fine, all fair and square. No complaints about that. But while I'm here, the man's committing crimes against me. He's beating me, robbing me, putting me in the hole with no chance to argue or appeal, feeding me swill, paying me 35 cents a day, slave wages, and then cheating me out of that. Those are crimes. Nobody's charging the man. He's got complete amnesty. Red alert! They're coming in! Get the lights to hospice! Cover the hostages! Get the wall! They double cross them! Come over, they double cross them! Come in! They double cross them! They got them so they can come in! They let them we got to get out of here, fellas! Let me go. Let me go. They're going to kill us. Oh, no. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. All right. All right. Ain't nothing but some chump acting crazy. Everybody stay cool. Nobody going to get hurt. False alarm. I see. I'm sorry. Things are getting a little touchy. We're trying to help, but there's got to be some compromise on both sides. Well, somebody better do something. Because I don't know how long we can hold this together. to a non-imperialist country, Mancusi. You encouraged that. How in the hell are we ever supposed to get them to come together on anything? Gentlemen, we just got word from the hospital the guard Tanner has been put on the critical list. That's exactly why we need amnesty. That's exactly why, why we, we need, need the, 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 the action to negotiate. No, yeah. We need, we need to be able to Because every single man in that yard is an amnesty. I'm not Would you get me the home number of District Attorney Harold Turner, please? What are you doing? I'm going to go to see the DA. What's with the unilateral action? Aren't we going to discuss it? All we've been doing is discuss it. Tom, you already said no amnesty. Thank you. Well, that was to Oswald. I want to go see him for myself. Anybody else want to go? Ray? Yeah. Yeah, I'll see if I can get us some passes and get us a car. I'll meet you outside. How'd you ever get so optimistic working in Washington? <laughs> Mr. Turner? This is Tom Wick over at Attica. I hate to wake you up, but I've got to come and see you. Yeah, I, I realize it's very early. Tom Wicker of the New York Times. Say, uh, you run that radio station in New York? That's right. Well, now I guess we're going to hear how this riot happened. How all we redneck guards have been brutalizing the cons. You people make me sick. You don't want them on the streets, raping your wives, turning your kids into junkies. Oh, no. 
Now put them away. Keep them out of sight. Because you don't want to deal with them. I understand. You don't understand deal. anything. Somebody has got to deal with them. How would you like to spend every day in here with these animals? And every time you walk through the yard, you wonder, is this the time one of them's going to stick a shank in your gut? I'd like to get you and your buddies in here for a week. Just a week. Without your money and your big names. Then we'd see whose side you're on. I think you better go. You know to me around. I work here. Boy. Raymond. What was that all about? Nothing. Raymond? <clears throat> oh, nothing. <clears throat> oh, I wish it. I had a toothbrush and a clean shirt. We've been here two days. It feels like a week, huh? Gentlemen, of course they need amnesty, but they're threatening to kill the hostages. Now, I'm sworn to uphold the law. How can I go along with that kind of blackmail? Well, Mr. Turner, so far you've told us what you feel you can't do, and we appreciate that, but, but turn it around. Would you give us a statement of what you will do? I'm not sure I understand. Well, you promised fair and impartial trials. Now, that's a start. See, some of these men were in the riots at the tombs or, or Auburn, and afterwards they were charged with little nitpicking things, anything so the state could pile up more time on them. Well, I certainly don't intend to do anything like that. Then there's the big thing. A guard may die. They're afraid they all could be charged with murder just for being there. If you could promise that there'll be no mass indiscriminate prosecutions. That goes without saying. Not to these men, Mr. Turner. Uh, you and me and Mr. Franklin here, I think we're decent, reasonable men trying to find a solution. But those men in the yard, they have been treated for so long as something other than men, as, as cons, as animals, criminals, a, a different species, not like us, that they've begun to see themselves that way. Now, if we want them to act like us, we're going to have to give them their humanity back. we got to convince them that the system works for them as well as for us. Now, you can do that. You can turn it around. Well, you think it'll do any good? I'll type something out. He did it. Damn it, he went further than he had to. Listen to this. No mass prosecutions. Charges only when evidence links a specific individual with a specific crime. No prosecutions brought for the sake of vindictive reprisals. A promise to prosecute crimes committed against the men as well as by them. A promise to safeguard the rights of the defendants. Now, how about that? <laughs> Garbage. Doesn't mean a thing. It's better than nothing. It is nothing. I agree with Bill. He promised to do his duty as a prosecutor. God, Mom, and apple pie. Now, wait a minute. Tom here had to squeeze that out of him. Now, I'm not saying that it's, it's total amnesty or anything like it. The point is, would you rather go back in that yard with it or without it? Now, come on, Ray. They're not idiots out there. They know a shot when they see one. Those men trust me. I'm not recommending a sellout. We're trying to save lives here. You're worried about losing the trust of your clients? Whose lives are you trying to save, Senator? The hostages. My clients have lives, too, Senator. They're men. Just because they committed crimes doesn't exclude them from the human race. And what about the lives of the people your clients crippled, raped, and murdered, huh? Let's keep them in mind before we start feeling too sorry about your revolutionary heroes. They're not all murderers and rapists, man. No, no black 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 black. Wait a minute. Everybody's talking and no one's listening. No one's saying this is the whole package. We've got their demands. Somebody call Osborne. Let's go to work. Right. What about Bobby Seale? Now, he's supposed to be here. The men really want him. Where is he? He promised to come. Leon, there are too many of us. Why don't you appoint an executive committee and the rest of us will ratify what you come up with? OK. Counselor, Franklin, Wicker, and Badillo. Leon, uh, leave me out, will you? I'm going to go try to write my story.
how can you sleep, Molly? I'm on a holiday. Well, I'll think of it as a picnic. As long as this lasts, I can do what I want. Sleep when I want, wake up when I want, wear what I want. You can't go where you want. Where are you gonna go, TJ? Back to bed, Sty? Filthy apartments, rats, freezing in the winter, sweating in the summer. We got all that here. We ain't got nothing here, and nothing's happening. You young bloods, always wanting action. Just can't wait. Them dogs sick of waiting. Waiting on the corner for something to jump. Waiting for the welfare check. Waiting for the doctor while my mama dying. I remember once when I got out of Elmira, I was trying to get a job working with kids, you know? But there I was, waiting for four hours till a man told me I couldn't have it, because I've been in the reformatory. I'm done waiting. Color folks wait. Black men don't. Yeah, well. I may be colored folks to you, but I'm old enough to be your daddy. You the new black man. Gonna help your people. Gonna stand tall. But who you gonna help in here? Huh? What you gonna change? We gonna get action here. And when we do, you better get under something or behind something. I don't want all the work I put in on you wasted on no dead man. Inmates had 31 demands, I've agreed to 28. If they're truly interested in prison reform, they'll accept this. The demands the Muslim brothers agreed to include amnesty, and throwing out Mancusi, and transportation to non-imperialist countries. Those items are non-negotiable on the governor's orders. He's backing me on the rest. You also got the DA statement. That should help. Are you all going to try to sell this or not? Mr. Kunstler? I'll tell them I think it's the best they can get. Without amnesty, they ain't got spit. But I'll tell you one thing. The people in there with the most clout are the Panthers, and the Panther with the most clout is Bobby Seale. You get him in here to sell it. He should have been here by now. He was. Troopers turned him away. Oh, my God. God. You, got him. you get him back now. Damn it, Russ. I said now. And politely. The leader of the Black Panthers is going to get chased by a cop car and asked politely to go to prison. Hmm. Slow down. Mr. Seal. Commissioner Oswald and Superintendent Mancusi wish to apologize for the misunderstanding. They asked me to give you an escort back to Attica. Well, the Black Panthers are always happy to oblige the law. There's something you should know, gentlemen. The guard, Tanner, he just died.
brothers. I just got here, been briefed, as they say. But it definitely looks like to me like we're going to get some kind of change, some revolutionary change. All right. concessions the man is willing to give I read them you're gonna hear them and we're gonna leave them here for you to study but the fact is you the political people here you got to decide what's right and how far are you willing to go it's waffly. he said he wasn't gonna tell him what to do wouldn't be right for the Black Panthers to tell you what to do. But our hearts are with you. How it's the people. Believed in him, he could end it. Tell him to give up. The head of the Black Panther Party, he's too busy worrying about his image. Uh, Bobby's between a rock and a hard place. He says, take the deal. He's a sellout. He says, shove it. They get him for inciting a riot. Well, I talked to a black in here yesterday who just wants to get out of this thing a lot. Now, who's worrying about him? Somebody better do something. Just forgave him for everything. Now you read it, discuss it, vote on it, do whatever you want, and let us know. I realize the lack of amnesty is not acceptable to you now that the guard has died. Shut up.
Boy, oh, that TV dude's following me every place. Hell, yeah, man. You're a big time celebrity. Star of the six o'clock news. Yeah, not bad for a black boy from Harlem, huh? Man, last time anybody took my picture other than the pigs, I was standing on the deck of the USS Halifax in Norfolk, Virginia, in my dress whites. Looking right, tight, and bright. <laughs> well, you ain't looking any too bright now, Jack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you write, man? Your last will and testament? No. I figure since we gave him our answer to the 28 points, they might come back with a little something to sweeten the pot. Now, if the suckers do, we're going to need some words to make the brothers take the deal. Yeah, make it look like we won instead of like we rolled over. Hmm? Well, there was some good stuff in that paper you tore up, Frank. Who you figure on saying them words? You. The celebrity. some sleep, wake up in the morning and have to start counting bodies. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going back in that yard again. It's over. It can't be. We've got to keep talking. Oh, come on, Tom. To who? Ourselves. I'm with Art. I don't look good in a blindfold. Well, if not to them, to Oswald. To anybody, as long as we're talking, looking for a way out, trying to find a compromise, but he's getting killed. Tom, it's useless. People who make the decisions, they're not listening. If we cash in, they'll take over with their damn guns. They've got the solution. Go in there and shoot the place up. We can't let them do that. been in the yard. We have seen the hostages. They're in as good shape as we expected. No, 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 no. We don't want them there. No. We don't want them going in Now, that's a different matter. He won't have to negotiate with the men. He'll talk with us. Yeah, we're at an impasse, and Rockefeller's the only one who can break it. Why ain't he here? He's the main man, ain't he? He's responsible. What's he doing up in some mansion while his place is bleeding? Look, we're not just talking about the hundred who could be killed here. If he goes in, it could start rioting and killing. That could affect every black and Puerto Rican community in the state. That's nonsense. We're using minimal force. <laughs> How many minimal force? The force. only see... thing I haven't seen out there is a tank. But the issue is still amnesty, and that's not negotiable. So what are you buying? Time. We're buying time. Now, what's not negotiable today may be negotiable tomorrow. It's beginning to stink out there. They're running out of food. Now, there's going to be pressure for compromise. Just a minute. Time works against us, too. One corrections officer has already died. What happens if hostages are killed while we're waiting? Yes. 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 Now, hold it. I have been getting hundreds of telegrams and phone calls. The switchboard is jammed from policemen, corrections officers, and the unions from all over the state. 
Now, they want to know how much longer I'm going to let this go on. Commissioner, you've got nothing to apologize for. The press will support you. You're the press. I broke every rule, put my career on the line. I got nothing back. I'm sorry. It's out of my hands now. The Committee of Observers in Attica Prison is now convinced a massacre of prisoners and guards may take place in this institution. For the sake of our common humanity, we call on every person who hears these words to implore the governor of this state to come to Attica to consult with the Observer Committee so we can spend time and not lives in an attempt to resolve the issues before us. Send the following telegram to Governor Nelson Rockefeller, Albany, New York. Please go to Attica Prison to meet with the Observers Committee. Now, does that reflect everybody's ideas? Can we all agree on this statement? It's great, yeah, Tom. Tom. That's great. Hallelujah. We finally agree on something. It won't work. It's not going to come. This is a law and order year, and there are more votes out there than in here. There's a principle involved here. I don't think he's going to decide an issue like this on the basis of partisan politics. Who's going to read it to the press? Leon, you read it. You start this whole thing. Who's going to read it in the yard? Nobody's going back in the yard. I think we ought to agree on that. Somebody's got to go. We got to tell the man what's coming down. I'll go. I ain't afraid of my brothers. Tell him in the corridor, no farther. Look, where the hell is Oswald? He's up there counting votes with Rocky. I'm telling you, we have only one chance. We've got to get Rocky to come here to give us some more time, some credit with those guys. Well, if I had his number, I'd call it. I've got it. He usually spends his Sundays at the county club. Here, call him. Uh, this is Tom Wicker, associate editor of the New York Times. I'd like to speak to the governor, please. Just a moment, please. Hello, Tom. Uh, governor, we're up here at Attica, and I... I know you are, and I appreciate it. I really do. It's great, just great. Uh, we've got a desperate situation here, Governor. There's an awful lot of firepower, and a bunch of angry, frustrated, emotionally involved men behind the guns. Now, our last card is for you to come up here and talk to us. Forgive me, Tom, but I think that's a little unrealistic. Now, let, I want to emphasize, Governor, talk to us, not the men. But they'll demand to talk to me. And, Tom, if I can't give them what they want, what's to stop them from asking for the president? But, Governor, I... I, I... Herman, where are you, Governor? The issue is time. How are you, Herman? I'm not feeling too good, Governor. But then none of us are going to feel too good, especially those of us who hold elective office when we have to go to our constituents and explain why a massacre happened, sir. Herman, I think we must look at these things not only in terms of the immediate, but in terms of the longer implications of what we're doing in our society. I'm just thinking of lives, Governor. We need time to save lives. I can give you that a little. You can tell the men I strongly support the 28 points. There are real gains there, if they'll accept them. But if they won't, I'll have no choice but to tell Commissioner Oswald to reopen the institution. Thank you, Governor. You will come. That's it. I think we've got today. After that, the hostages are expendable. What'd they say? What happened when you read the statement? They're hot. They think we're jobbing them, making statements, but not coming in. They want to make sure the man understands the situation. What is the situation? They want four of us in the yard right away. They say the hostages got a message. And there's got to be a white reporter with credibility on the outside to take it all down. Before you go in, I have to tell you I've issued a statement. What kind of statement? I urgently request you to release the hostages unharmed now and to accept the recommendations of the Committee of Outside Observers. That's not a statement, that's an ultimatum. But what is that? We didn't recommend that they accept your package. 
We negotiated these concessions. We told them that we thought that that was the best that they could get, but that they would have to decide. Only after these steps are taken will I meet with you. That makes it sound like we're telling them to surrender. If we don't have their trust, we don't have anything. Nobody's crazy about going back in there anyway. You don't have to go. In fact, I strongly recommend you don't go. We have to go. Gentlemen. What is this? Waivers. You'll have to sign them. They say you are aware of the dangers involved and you release the state from any and all liability. How come none of you can look me in the eye? Brother Frank, we both Muslims, and I come to you in the faith. We didn't know nothing about this new Oswald thing. The man double-crossed us. These men are just as hot about it as you are. Why should I believe you? Because it's the truth. And these men would love to kill you. <laughs> well, I guess you can, if you want to. If we off these men, it's all over. Let them talk to the hostages. Our friends from the outside say that this isn't theirs. And I believe them. Now they want to see the hostages. We'll let the hostages deliver a message to the government. Ezra. This here is Captain Cohen. Now he'll tell you the righteous truth. How you feeling, Captain? Well, I feel pretty good, I guess. Considering we've been with these boys for four days now, we've had nothing but good treatment from them. Have you got anything to say to the governor? Yeah. Yeah, I got two kids and seven grandchildren. So anything he can do, I'm hardly in favor of. We've got 39 men here, all living in the same conditions. 39 men with the best understanding of the problem. It's a shame to waste an educated group of men like that. <laughs> Ask him about amnesty. <laughs> Would you cut that thing off just a minute? TJ, don't prompt me like that right on camera. I'm supposed to be interviewing these men honestly, not playing a part for you. Hey, y'all, come on down here. Come on. Ask him how he feels. How do you feel about that amnesty? 
Well, the, these men got certain demands, and these demands got to be met, like amnesty. I mean, Governor, you say no to amnesty, I'm dead. Would you give them amnesty? Hell yes. Anything they want. I've got two years to retirement. I've been doing this rotten job for almost 30 years. You know why I took it in the first place? <laughs> the security. <laughs> Made this statement. Brothers want to know what to do next. It's getting late, Frank. We got to decide. Now you're the leader. You can lead them any way you want. Right now they'll die for you. And Bobby Seal and the folks in the ghetto will think you're a righteous man. There's brothers here that just want to live. You got to decide for them, too. them that. Don't they know this is suicide? You know, they'll listen. No, they're men. They have a right to their own decision. They don't understand. They don't surrender. They'll be wiped out. Somebody's got to tell them. And you tell them. Put your nose out of your book and tell them. What we're going to do now is I'm going to have a bath, a good 
What do you mean I can't get back here? Order. Who's order? Commissioner Oswald, sir. No one in or out. The phone's dead. What are they doing to us? You know the phone is dead? Okay, this is too much. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Yes, sir. Showing the pig they could. What'd you expect? Anything they do is okay with you, isn't it? You're one of them. They're brother. You're scum like them. They've cut the power. That means they're going in. Attica Correctional Officers will not participate in this operation. I repeat, Commissioner Oswald and Governor Rockefeller have forbidden Attica Correctional Officers from participating. This operation will be conducted by state troopers only. You are not to fire indiscriminately. You will discharge your weapon only when an overt, hostile act is threatened. There is to be no hand-to-hand -hand combat. You are not to be taken. Your weapon is not to be taken. That's all. Good luck. Right, face, double time, march! kind of action you were talking about. That's it. All right. 
Let's go. Get down, everybody, on the floor. Yes. Come on, let's, let's bed it down low. You will not be harmed. It was. Let's go! 
The firing in the yard went on for six minutes. When it was over, 39 people were dead. 10 hostages and 29 inmates. Three hostages and 85 inmates were seriously wounded. It was the largest number of casualties in a single engagement between Americans since the Civil War. That afternoon, authorities reported that the hostages had been killed by inmates who slit their throats and that one hostage had been castrated. The next day, Autopsies revealed that all 10 hostages who died were killed by gunfire from state troopers or Attica corrections officers. The rebellion at Attica was begun by powerless men protesting the condition of their lives. But in seizing hostages, the inmates themselves adopted the violence and inhumanity they were protesting. The rebellion was ended by a powerful state. Troopers sprayed the yard with buckshot, which killed unintended victims. Marksmen used big game rifles loaded with dum-dum bullets, outlawed by the U.S. Army as causing excessive pain. At Attica, the sanctity of human life was forgotten. Reason failed. Violence triumphed. But I believe there was another choice. If we had been able to strip away the labels that separate us and recognize our common humanity, we could have chosen life with all its uncertainty, its frustration, its fear, and its hope over the sure, awful, final solution of the guns.